I'm going to tell you how to get your economy out of a slump, but we're going to take our plan straight out of South Park. You might think I'm joking or exaggerating, I mean it's just South Park, right? But the average economist would agree that the approach taken by the show is indeed the correct way to combat the crisis, and guess what? It's also the strategy most governments are taking today to fight the current crisis. First, a quick recap of the South Park episode where these ideas come from. In the episode Margaritaville, South Park and the nation have entered a financial crisis. People are finding that the money they had thought had been kept safe in their bank account has disappeared. And, it's gone. and much like in the real world, no one knows why this is happening, except one man, Randy, who is confident that the excesses of our society, the overconsumption, the exuberance, all this mindless spending has led to a recession. And the antidote to that recession is the economic equivalent of going on a diet. Cut down on spending, get your budget in order. The antidote is austerity. Now, hold up. The idea of austerity which Randy champions is exactly how you should not dig yourself out of an economic downturn. That's because before I tell you how to fight an economic crisis, you first need to know how not to fight an economic crisis. And the answer to that question lies with our favourite Lord Cross-Dressing Integrity Farming South Park Dad. There are two layers to what Randy is suggesting with regards to austerity. He's not just saying that you as an individual should spend less and save more. He is also arguing that if we as a society or a country want to get out of this crisis, all of us need to save more and spend less. And if you disagree, be ready to face death by squirrel. Before we go any further, let's take a moment to appreciate that South Park basically prophesied how appealing austerity as a solution would become over the next few years. This episode came out in 2009, before we would see austerity being used as the solution in the Greek sovereign debt crisis and before we saw the UK and other nations embark on controversial austerity programs. In each case, just like what we saw with Randy's preaching, blame was pinned on spending and the solution was to cut debt spending down. So why was austerity such a popular solution even though most mainstream economists would tell you it's a terrible idea in a crisis? I think there are two answers to this question. First, on an individual level, we all know that we should have a budget and be responsible with our finances. So when Randy tells you we all need to do that now since we're in a crisis, it kind of makes sense. Secondly, it's so intuitive when he says, hey, we entered this crisis because we all went on a spending binge. <laughs> The economy overheated and now we're paying the price. To get back to normal, let's just stop doing what caused the crisis. Except this reasoning is completely wrong. Before we had a global debate about whether austerity worked before concluding that no it really doesn't work, South Park had already made its case. By the end of the episode, the town of South Park doesn't exit recession by following the teachings of Randy, rather it's Kyle who saves the day by preaching the virtues of being reckless and spending money during a crisis. And here is why Kyle is right and Randy is wrong. The first mistake Randy makes is assuming that things which make sense for the individual also make sense in the aggregate. This is a famous error and it's called the paradox of thrift. Yes, it makes sense on an individual level to be responsible and save money. But if we all save money at the same time, no one is spending that money. And if no one is spending that money, no one is earning that money. In our quest to all save money at the same time, we've actually become poorer. Here's a bit more intuition. Let's say you buy a Margaritaville. You take the Margaritaville and pass the Margaritaville seller some cash. That seller now has cash in his pocket that he can then spend on, say, fried chicken. When the fried chicken man sells his chicken, he gets money that he now gets to spend. And that's the circle of life in the economy. By spending money, we get things we want and enable others to also get things that they want. It's a cycle and we need to spend to keep that cycle going. And if we all stopped and started saving because we were told to save our way out of a crisis, that's when things actually get worse. That's why austerity doesn't work in South Park and the results in the real world have also been mixed, to put it generously. Randy is right in diagnosing the cause of the crisis. Economies go through periods of boom and bust. The bigger you boom, the harder you bust. So when times are good, the ideas in austerity economics aren't terrible. Yeah, this is the time to save money and cut spending prepare for a rainy day, and if you don't try to cool the economy down and instead give in to the boom, well things start overheating and the economic bubble is at risk of a meltdown. But 
when you are already in a crisis, that's when you want to start getting everybody to spend. The economy is starting to freeze and it needs the heat. In South Park, Carl does this by cancelling everyone's debt so they can start spending again. Though most of the time in the real world, this is accomplished by increasing government spending. Say by giving out stimulus checks or spending on infrastructure. In fact, old school economist John Maynard Keynes would argue that the type of spending does not matter. All that matters is that the spending happens. To quote the man himself, the government should pay people to dig holes in the ground and then fill them up. Of course, Keynes was being edgy for his day, but he does mean it. It's better to spend money on productive things, but if the choice is between not spending money at all and financing the digging of holes, well, he'd rather have people pay to dig the holes. And that wraps up today's episode. Don't forget to uh, subscribe or whatever. Here are more videos for you to chew on. I hope you enjoy.